It says go live. Okay, I think we're there. Let's hit this button. Now we started. I think we're there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's full screen. Hey, Hoogie's here. I see hidden. There's Risers, Treasure Hunting Emporium, Blues, Coins, Weasel, 63, Wally B. We got uh, Reverend Dave, Vern LaPointe. We got uh, we got four thumbs down already. I guess people like to pay too much. That's okay. But look, check this out. We got, are you ready? We got uh, we got uh, Shea Hopmaster over at Mantic Coins is going to help out. He's got some some things we're going to talk about. It'll be fun. Come on. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. There we go. Thanks for coming. You're going to find a link to Mantic's channel and his blog in the uh, description down below the video. And there's a couple other links that are going to be important later on. Mm -hmm. So wait for it. Uh, we'll talk about them. You'll be able to find them. There's Ant. There's a whole bunch of people hidden. Graduate student Shea has graduated and he's doing post-grad work now. Coin and card is Amanda. Jeff Stanley. I just watching one of Jeff Stanley's videos. Uh, he's got his uh, his plan laid out for the entire year. You want to get in there, check that out. David Wiltrout, that's a new name. If you're new, uh, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button. It's down below here somewhere. Uh, hit it until it turns or uh, changes color. I think it turns orange or some darn thing. But when you uh, uh, you log on, it'll tell you if I did something or you know if we're if we're live. If you're already on, uh, you don't miss out stuff. But we we do a lot of uh, regular shows. Uh, let's see, what's that one we do on Thursdays? Q and A. Q and A. Let me get the the screen here. Um, that one. There it is. There's a Facebook group, and I think I put the link for that down below, so you'll find the uh, the Coin Q and A group because we jump from channel to channel. Last week was a uh, uh, Frank uh, Coin Dragon over his channel. Week before was Mantic. I think uh, is it my turn this week? It is. I, oh gosh. Okay. Well, we do that Thursday nights, and we got a Facebook group. It's called Coin Q and A. You'll be able to find it. Hopefully, you'll be able to find it, and it'll tell you, you know, who's the one, what, when. And uh, let me keep on top that way. And we got, let's see, we got the big show, of course. I got a button for that. That's not, that's not it. Where's the big show button? The biggest. I don't think I have a big show button. That's not it. <laughs> the biggest giveaway there there. on YouTube. There the we go. biggest giveaway on YouTube. And that's on uh, Sunday nights. Most Sunday nights. Sometimes I say to hell with it. I'm going back to bed. Because that's how we roll over here. Uh, there's a lot of fun. We do things. We do all sorts of things. Oh, there's Linda Wallace. How have you been, dear? Jeff, one on. job. Did one job. I got like <laughs> 37 different <laughs> windows open here, trying to get stuff lined up for this uh, this class. Hey, hey uh, it's going to be confusing. I'm really proud of this guy over here. He's uh, he he tweets. And if you didn't know, you can check him out at Ken Peavy. If you at don't Ken have Peavy, it's that easy. And he's uh, at Coin Mantic. It's the way it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hoogie says, I'm not going to pay a lot for this muffler. I paid too much for my first divorce and it sucked. My brother's second divorce, she <laughs> cleaned him out so bad, she got my washer and dryer. True story. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Now I got a washing machine that's crapped out. I could really use the thing now, but that was like, you know, 25 years ago. He's working on his third or fourth ex-wife now. I don't know. This is like they get it. They rent a bus and go on vacation together now. Not my brother, just his ex-wives. They got like a team. <laughs> oh, no. It's what? What's going on here? <laughs> Honey, we need gas money. We need gas money. There you go. He just. He gets to finance the whole thing. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, paying too much for coins. Yes. All right. And it's, gosh, we can learn so much from this. Uh, I see this sort of thing going on everywhere, all the time. People aren't sure exactly what they're buying. I see people put up pictures of a coin and said, I bought this for $50. Did I do good? Um, usually before you buy the coin would be the time to 
you know, decide if you got a good deal or not. Mm, what do you got there? This is a gray sheet. Uh huh. And uh, I, I take this whenever I go to shows. I, I have it on my person pretty much 24 hours a day. Here you go. It's a gray sheet. All right. All right. Now, uh, just a few pages in is a very important page. And it's called, uh, it's usually around 27 or 29. And it's proof sets and mint sets. Uh, just for instance, a 1971S proof set goes for $2.75 bid. $2.75. A uh, 1971 mint set goes for $2.75. So does 72. All right. Maybe a small date 70 mint set would go for 40 bucks, or uh, a large date mint set would go for 13 50. So we're but talking 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, no, no, no. But this is the kind of stuff um, you guys should should know uh, before you buy is is knowing what, what the going prices are, whether you're buying wholesale or retail, what is the, the right price, right? Man, this price is all over the place. Where do you go to to get accurate, you know, estimates of price? You get these uh, price lists. You get, uh, where's that one? Oh, here. It's under the pile here. Uh, the Red Book. Everybody says, get the Red Book. And they put it out every year so that they can, you know, sell another 15,000 books. And you got prices in there. Um, these are, well, they're kind of in the ballpark, but it's kind of a a big ballpark that they're using. Hard to tell on that. We'll get into uh, some other. She said, I don't think I put the link for for Numus down below. Oh, I think real quick. I think well, he just put that. Numus Media. But you know, it's 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 kind of interesting because the only column anybody looks at in the Red Book is the uh, MS sixty eight or sixty nine, whatever that far right column is. You know, I got a penny. What is it? And they're looking in the proof column. Honey, oh, Jesus, the toys were seven thousand dollars. Yeah. All right, she's out buying a new dress. <laughs> then you realize, oh, it's. You know, it's over here on the far other side, and it's damaged. So, well, so much for that. Well, the madness asks, uh, how does the blue book compare? I think the quality of it's about the same. Uh, you get the hard cover, the nice glossy pages, uh, but that's designed more for uh, for for wholesale uh, prices or, or dealer to dealer. Um, figure, take everything in here and multiply by 0. 0.7. That's probably about what you can expect. Uh, and still, the prices are kind of, kind of hefty. They're kind of hefty. Uh, gray sheets is uh, probably the best uh, price guide for intra-dealer uh, sales or buying from the general public. Uh, Ooh. Walter Burdecki had a good idea, and he basically said, "You know, was that a good deal or not?" Sounds like a great video title. But how about a whole series, or how about a show or a segment in Coin Q and A where you can ask us if you did good or not? Did I do good? Shoot. That might Sometimes, be yeah. I got a whole outline. We're going to go down here in a second if I can pull that up. Let's see. Screen. And that's not it. Oh, that's great. I'm going to get into this. <laughs> well, I'm way down at the bottom. Okay. So my screen's going to be kind of screwed up for most of this show as we uh, get into it. Okay, I'm going to shut you down, but if, if you start talking, I'll put you back up, okay? Yeah, no problem. How do I do this? There. All right. We're going to get over to that. Oh, quit it. I keep opening the wrong thing. No, I did it twice. Joshua got a good deal last night, found a 1905 V nickel in a box. Sweet. Hmm. You don't get those too often. Okay, caveat emptor. Should we buy this coin or not buy this coin? And it comes down to a couple of things you'll need to know about that coin before you spend the money. The first one that's most important is identification. Now, the second item is going to be grade, so we'll get into that when we get up to the second item. But you're going to need these two things. Uh, identifying the coin. What is it, right? Series, date, mint mark, those three items are always uh, dominant. And any price guide you pick up is going to have 
uh, coin values based on you know these particular features and then one for grade where you have to we'll get into that in a minute but a lot of dealers uh don't further identify their coin as far as design variety die variety or error so here's a chance uh to pick up some coins where it's identified partly but not fully and this is uh this is what cherry picking is all about where you can find these coins that Geez, uh, the guy thought it was, you know, a regular old two cent piece, but it turns out it was a, you know, a repunch date and a pretty, uh, pretty major one. But uh, it's also important to determine if the coin is genuine. Ooh, ooh, I got a picture of this one. You ready? Let me get over to eBay. Where's eBay? And I got to click to the wider screen. Okay, you got to be able to tell if the coin is genuine. And if you're going by photos, well, you got to be able to look at that photo and decide, is it is it real or is it Memorex? I've got a regular 1918 uh, Mercury dime here showing. But what do you see the next one? And one of these is probably genuine, and the other one uh, might be a little shady. Let's have a look at this one. This is the back. And if you're familiar with these things and you, uh, you, know, you look at them all the time, you could probably tell that, geez, that... That uh, that fascies there in the middle looks a little wide, right? Kind of beefy on the leaves and stems here. And what is going on with this chick's lips? Hmm. Does that look no? Does that look normal to you? <laughs> Man, I've caught redfish that are prettier than that. <laughs> Do lick her lips. You can stick her to a window. What, what is that? Okay, just because a dealer is able to identify the date, identify the grade, maybe even come up with a fair estimate of the grade, does not nece necessarily mean that this guy's uh, you know well versed in his coins, and and knows that it's authentic. Uh, you got to watch yourself. It all comes down to your ability to. Uh, no, nope, that's the wrong one again. I'm going to click this another hundred times. It all comes down to your ability to identify that coin for yourself, right? And if you don't know what you're buying, if you can't identify your coin, uh, just run away. Just really step away. If you don't know if it's authentic, if you can't tell with the experience that you have, get out of here. Now, the seller should be able to explain the coin. And if the seller is not able to explain what it is, you know, as far as series, date, mint mark, you get a lot of foreign coins coming into the market right now. Uh, then just get out of there, honestly. Uh, identification is a key aspect to these, and we're getting a lot of folks who are involved in uh, in these die varieties and errors. And uh, I see it all the time where people are saying, "What what error is this?" Before uh, really exploring the subject. Uh, and then marking the coin as a you know some sort of valuable error when it's simply uh, it's been uh, you know drilled through with a with a hammer or something. Well, you know what I see on uh, on eBay all the time is the uh, the seller saying, "Look, you be the you you tell me the grade or you you determine the grade." Really? Come on, you're gonna take the time to take pictures of this thing, write up stuff about it, post it. And you're not going to go ahead and put the grade that you think it is? Come on. Well, it, sometimes they do. And can you trust it? It comes down to that um, as well. Uh, you've got some less scrupulous dealers who will, you know, it's an XF coin. I'm looking at the thing and no, it's barely, you know, it's barely fine. And it's got a scratch across the head. I like when they say better grade and it's not even about good. It's It's like a poor half <laughs> not even a poor one tour you have to be able to grade him for yourself just by looking at the coin and let me get back to this uh way to go i gotta find my way again uh here it is okay then i click on that uh, and said uh that that's because they get hassled if the customers disagree well you know what if a customer disagrees and you're a seller give them a refund give them a refund I mean, that's it. That's how you do business. That's how you get that customer back again next time. Good Lord. As hard as, hard as, it, is, as it is to get a regular customer, if you're not treating them right, if you're not offering a, a refund, um, you're doing it wrong, man. 
You're going to lose them. Let's see. I want to continue on this. Uh, how do we get there? I got to click this button. Then I go back to here. Are we seeing this? Yep. You're okay. Good. It comes down to the uh, the buyer's ability to identify that coin, determine if it is genuine, and then also grade the thing. You have to be able to determine the grade for yourself. This is, I would call it a key skill that any buyer of coins will need to develop. Right? Honestly, if you cannot grade the coin with reasonable accuracy, right? Uh, how often uh, do you come across a coin and it's, it's VF, and the seller says it's XF or even AU. I've seen him say gem BU, and it's barely, you know, VF. Um, you can't go with what's written on the flip. You can't take a seller's word. If you want to get an accurate grade, you have to de determine that grade for your scalp. So develop those skills. Now, down below, I've got a link, uh, and this will take you to PCGS Photo Grades playlist. Because PCGS has eight, is it eight videos? Yeah, I think it's something like that. Just for 101, but they have 102 and 103 as well. Oh, they yeah. got, they, I got to find it. I got it up here. That's not it. Where to go? Where to go? Here it is. Okay. Eight. Yeah. Coin grading 101, introduction to, introduction to coin grading. Uh, watch these really watch them repeatedly. They got eight videos in a row. You'll find a link to the playlist You can open up one at a time uh, What are they uh, five minutes long ten minutes yeah, long? Five, really not that bad. One is 11 minutes, but the rest are, are short I mean you can do it in less than uh, an hour. You can watch all those you can watch them all and take take an hour invest that hour in your ability to learn how to grade coins because if you cannot grade that coin for yourself, you don't know what you're getting. How can you tell if you're getting a decent deal if you don't know what kind of condition the coin is in to begin with? I tell you what, I, I've, I've taken, I've gone through those classes four times in the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and I still pick up nuance, nuantic things uh, that they're saying. And I understand them at a new level now of what they're saying. And so don't just watch them once. Watch them now. Watch them three months from now. Um, you know, even even if you think you know your stuff, still watch them because I think it round it it makes your makes you a more well rounded uh, person in the hobby. So when you can give the class, then then you you know then you you've got it figured out. Um, it takes a little time to learn how to grade coins accurately. It's not just getting in the ballpark. It's being accurate. Uh, there is strike. There is centering in the rim. There are rim dings to consider. Um, some dates you've got a lot of dye wear, a lot of deterioration. You have to include that into your into your uh, uh, your estimate. Uh, is it you know XF for that particular date, for that grade, for that coin, for that series? Quad does. Do do coins from a later die state receive high grades still? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, you know. Maybe uh, maybe the strike is a little lighter than, but the luster is phenomenal, and the surface preservation is norm is wonderful. I mean, so you have to. They do explain the percentages of which they use to grade by, uh, and some things like eye appeal are definitely subjective. But uh, yeah, just take a look, watch, you'll see. Uh, it you know once you once you watch these videos. And you begin to go beyond the basics. You start to really uh, think about those subjective aspects of their grading uh, and the way they do things. And it opens up all sorts of other uh, uh, realms of, of thought and discussion about coins and how they're made and how how they get into our hands. Mm. So. Experience is is the key aspect here. You learn as you go uh we're trying to get people trained up to get them uh more experience and and grading is a key skill that must be focused on honestly uh if you can identify the coin and come up with a fair grade then and only then can you come up with a value that's going to be part three coming up in just a minute yeah yeah and riser has a link there for pcs coin grading 101 and that should be uh I'm trying to click on that. 
that should be in the link down below. I've got the whole uh, the whole list. Thank you, there, the whole playlist. Uh, but get in there and check that out because if you cannot grade the coin accurately for yourself, it's pretty much anything can happen. Day. Spike Ted Diecrack says, "I'm working on eBay now. Slow go, but coming out well. Pictures speak volumes. Time consuming for pickup points. Yeah, but you're gonna like the rest of this show here." Okay, I'm gonna get back over now. I gotta click on that button. Go over to here. Go to the screen. Is that right? Then I go back to the outline. Can we see this okay? Yep, you're good. Okay. It's a, a, a grading a coin is a key skill that you need to develop. If you cannot grade the coins for yourself, um, you're taking somebody else's word for it. And the tendency is to overgrade, especially uh, newer and inexperienced sellers. Uh, people that are new to the hobby, they tend to overgrade. Um, and just because the guy's selling a coin doesn't mean he's a pro. Okay. So watch yourself. Do not do. Not, this is a key rule. Write this one down in your notes. Don't take the seller's word for it. Do not grow with a grade on the flip because uh, you don't know how long that coin's been in the flip and it's been owned by six people. And the first guy to put it in that flip, boy, he really liked it. He put Jim BU. Meanwhile, it's got, you know, a gouge on it or something. Uh, but when you're grading a coin, you have to take the best match without going over. Let's say if you're using a PCGS photo grade, okay? Um, always grade conservatively. Uh, the coins have two sides, and one side can be uneven, a little more worn on one side, for example. And you have to go with the worst side. And if you watch these uh, watch these videos, you'll get a, you know, a great idea of what's going on. Uh, watch out for split grades where a seller is saying it's VF, XF. Well, is it is it VF or is it XF? Is it AU or is it BU? When you have split grades, I always side with the lesser of those two grades that are that are being offered. And still I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look and grade that coin for myself. So I gotta have photos that are good enough to grade. And if I don't have a photo that's good enough to grade that coin, to just walk away. Just get out of there. Um, people can take a perfect selfie in the bathroom. They can take a decent photo of a coin. If the photo is not good enough to, to accurately grade the coin, I'm going to guess that something's wrong here. Uh, so just walk away. The best practice to grade a coin, right, uh, is to have it in hand. Really, if you don't have the coin in hand, it's going to be much tougher because cameras are only so good. Your eye will pick up things no camera ever will. Well, maybe in another 10, 15 years, cameras will be up to par. Uh, and of course, you'll need all new computer equipment to handle that sort of uh, uh, technology for those those image files. But uh, having the coin in hand, alter the direction of the lighting, move it around in your hand so you can get uh, different shadows and different lights on all the particular features and designs. Um, grading coins is... Uh, it's a learned skill. You're not going to pick it up overnight. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, and experience, experience is going to be your friend. you got to grade, I mean, hundreds, hundreds, thousands of coins before you start to be really accurate. And it's that accuracy that's going to make all the difference when you go to coming up with a value for that coin. Okay, you got to look for damage. Here's a neat one. A lot of people, uh, well... You know, the more war in the coin, the more you can get away with uh, for little blemishes. But as you get into higher and higher grades, into the MS 60s, 65s, 68s, uh, these little tiny bits begin to uh, to really matter, and they start to affect the value of the coin. Look for scratches, scrapes, dings, digs in the coin. Is it bent? Uh, I've seen bent coins being sold and getting you know good money. I always consider a bent coin to be destroyed. It's the same as being ruined. Uh, just throw it away. Is it burnt? I've seen those. Are there holes in it? The big one I see most often are clean coins because every new collector wants to make their collection look really good. They want a nice shiny coin. So they dip them, they clean them, they burn them, they soak them. They, they pour gasoline on the darn things just to try to get the extra gunk off. Uh, if there's doo-doo stuck on it, you're actually better off to have a coin with doo-doo on it than to have a coin where the doo-doo has been cleaned off because that cleaning 
alters the surface of the coin. And that's the same as removing value. Um, heavy contact and circulation marks can reduce the value. Is it discolored? Is it covered with fingerprints? Man, there's nothing looking at, there's nothing worse than look at those BU coins and they're covered with a fingerprint. Oh God. Yeah, before, oh, God, no before you move on uh, too far, I, I want to bring a couple of things up. Um, so uh, Seamus Omaha says, uh, if I pull a quarter out while coin roll hunting and it looks BU to me and like new, fresh from the mint, in quotes, can I still describe it as uncirculated even though it was pulled from circulation? Well, you know, if I think an uncirculated coin, I'm thinking of the grade um, mint state. And I think that if you can pull a coin out of circulation that's mint state, and you could get it graded that way, then sure. I mean, because it's generally not spent a lot of time circulating. Uh, people dump collections into the circulation all the time. Oh, my sister spent mine in a soda machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uncirculated is not the history of the coin, but the condition of the coin. I can pass coins in, in circulation, and if they're not getting worn, if they're not getting abused, if they're not getting rubbed, if they're not actually losing material, well, it's in uncirculated condition, even though it's been passed around by, you know, 10 different people buying popcorn. Now, the other thing, uh, when you when you start looking, a lot of variety, I have this, I have this problem. I'm a variety collector. I, I will look at the coin and I've, I've been training myself to do this more and more. And that is to first look at the coin in hand overall, get the front, the back, the rims, shine it in the light, look for scratches, things that pop out at you. Don't even dive into the coin to look for the variety until after you've, you've done a grade because you don't want to get lost in the, in, in the forest, right? Um, you're in the trees, you know, lost in the trees. So you want to see the forest at first and decide if you want to go in or not. All right. So if you're looking at that coin, then then sure, go look at the variety, but don't stop at just the variety. Make sure you look for damage. And, and too often I have completely skipped looking at the coin because my feet are dancing under the table. I want to buy this coin because it's RPM 001 or DDO 001 and I know it and I'm going to get a good price and I forget to look for damage. And I get home, and my feet are dancing. I put it under the microscope, and there's a big scratch in a major area. I'm like, no. <laughs> there, I thought I got a great deal on this wonderful RPM or double to die variety, but I, I'm, I'm never getting rid of that coin ever. <laughs> you need to take a holistic approach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> identifying and grading the coin. Yeah, um, there's coins. I, I I do this a lot of times with uh, you know late night shows where I got a sack of pennies or something here, and I'm going through and I pull them out and they're corroded. I don't even look at them any further, because what's the point? When they're that far gone, it could be a 1972 double die number one, and it, no, that's not even worth my time looking at. Uh, just cast them off. Gosh. Who wants to handle such hideous coins anyway? Not me. I'm good at that. <laughs> oh, secretly we have uh, uh, lots of those coins. <laughs> More people have those. We'll pass those on to the next people. So there's still good stuff out there. Okay, until you get a better one. Until you get a better one. But go for uh, go for those coins that. Uh, well, you know what it is. You can tell what it is. Uh, and you can grade it for yourself based on the photos. A lot of the sales right now are photographs online. You've got photos on Facebook. You've got photos on websites. You've got uh, some video coming out. And although the camera equipment is doing pretty well, we got you know great stuff like this. Um, it's still a long way before you get to the eye level. Uh, a camera like this will give you two megabytes. Let me see if I can pull that up. There you go. This will give my give me two megapixels of uh, resolution. Whereas your eyeball will give you more like 500 megapixels of resolution. Okay. Yeah, I could take a good clear shot, and it's probably enough that I can come up with a pretty pretty good grade. But my eyeball is going to pick up things this camera never will. 
Mm. And if I'm going with a static image, I can hide a lot of uh, I can hide a lot of sin just by changing the angle of that of that uh, that photograph. Oh, beware of the angled pictures. Or, oh, you know, it's funny. I love when they take a picture of the center of the coin so that when you're going by, you'll actually click on it. And then you see the gigantic hole right above. <laughs> oh, man, clickbait. There goes that. I'm losing stuff. <laughs> yep. They can take a perfect selfie, man. They can take a decent picture of a coin. And if they can't take a decent picture of the coin, just, just move on. There's a lot of other sellers out there. Ripe with sarcasm. That's me. <laughs> okay. But uh, take that. Take a holistic approach. Look at the whole coin. Uh, honestly, I get people, they focus on minutia, right? Thinking, is this an RPM? And, well, they skipped all this other information on that coin, like, say, you know, a potato chip sticking out of his head. Mm. I did it two months back with a CC quarter, says Jeff. He got caught up in the mint mark and did not pay attention and realized that it was a one-degree bend to it. Ooh, sorry, man. It's a toughie. Okay, we're going to keep on going. If I can find my way back to the, uh, let's see, how do we make this work? There's a screenshot. All right, then I got to fix this. Okay, because it gets good. We got pictures coming up. Where are you here? Okay. Okay, step three. We've got the coin identified, and we've got a grade. So the next task is to determine the value of the coin. Um, do you go by what the seller is saying it's worth? Do you go by the red book? You've got to have the identification and the grade correct, right? or at least as accurate as possible. And really, you could practice on your own collection right now. But at some point, you're going to need a price guide unless you keep immaculate records with hundreds or thousands of data points. Because what sets the price uh, is consensus. Uh, you got a thousand coins of the same date, the same grade being marketed, being sold. You're able to put together a database and come up with an average price or an average price range. And every one of these uh, price guides well, that's just it. It's a guide. It's not written in stone. Right? They've got uh, computer programs that will do the do the math, do the crunching for them. Uh, some of them will crawl the web. The web. Some of them only use uh, uh, auction records. But whatever method they're using, uh, they're coming up with some values. There's the Red Book, and I tell you, they only update that once a year. It's an annual publication. How accurate can it be after two or three months have passed? Uh, there's the Black Book, there's Coins Magazine, there's PCGS and NGC values. And you'll see those are rather inflated compared to what actual uh, um, market values are, are pulling, what, what the actual auction records are. There's USA Coin Book. Well, you know, some of these, like PCGS and USA Coin Book, uh, where they either get a percentage of the sale price uh, or base the uh, fees on a percentage of what they're calling the, uh, the the market value, uh, there's a there's an incentive here to to bump that price to put their thumb on the scale. So I'm going to take those with a grain of salt. They're accurate to a certain degree, hmm. But you really have to come up with a, a guide that you believe in for whatever reason it is. Uh, Pinterest, do not use Pinterest as a as a price guide, really. Really, that's that's people just hoping for luck. Ooh, which reminds me, uh, I got to check my lottery ticket later today. Um, and Pinterest really isn't uh, a good guide for for values. No. eBay sold listings. A lot of people say, you know, check the eBay sold listings. And I got some up here. I can show you here. That's Let's see. Thing. Home? No, no. I want the full screen. Nothing like eBay. taking the air out of your balloon pretty quick by looking Ooh. at eBay entries. <laughs> eBay sold. <laughs> okay, over the left side, you got a box you can check. It's uh, it's completed items. And I did this with uh, W quarters and Lowell quarters. And I'm going to talk about that in a bit. 
And here, uh, people say, look at these sold listings, and that's all well and good. You'll get a range, however, in the prices. You'll have a range of grades, uh, 17 bucks, 40 bucks. What's the difference? Well, this one's not certified. This one is at MS64. Here's a OBW, a whole darn roll with a W quarter as an ender for 90 bucks. Um, okay, here's another one. It's an MS66 with a, uh, a star label. Okay, so we have some, what, baseball card novelty holder here, 35 bucks. You, I got a range here already from $17 going up to, uh, you know, $35. And then we got a whole roll for 90. It's a pretty wide range here. What's that coin worth? You'd have to track that for a while and see where it's going to go. But something like this is rather new. Uh, 2019 Ws, these are rather new. And already you've seen them coming down in price. Um, honestly, you've got 2 million of these specimens out there. You need a whole lot more uh, data points to come up with a, a reasonable conclusion of what the value of those coins are. Because these, these prices are ranging by a factor of two to five. That's not accurate enough to come up with a market value. They have not traded enough yet to uh, to offer a decent market value, a dependable figure. I'm gonna find my way back to my notes here. This look right. Did I shut you off? Let me find my way back. No, here. I just I muted myself so I wouldn't. Oh, make okay, all right. I'm a little gassy tonight. Uh, it happens to me all the time. Where do you get older? Okay, I'm trying to find my way back here. There's the notes. Good. So eBay sold li listings. They're kind of handy in some instances, and other instances, they're they're just uh, what it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it's it's at least some ballpark for some things. Numismatic news is fairly uh, fairly decent. It comes out uh, with price lists every three months. Uh, there's the gray sheet. What is that weekly? Monthly. Monthly. It's you can get it goes a year. Yeah, you can get uh, that 270 price is a little high, but it's because uh, you get the version that you can get on your phone or on a computer and the printed version. There is there's other options if you wanted to just do the phone thing. There you or go. Mobile. But uh, if you wait until Thanksgiving, if you save up, you can get, uh, you know, like 40% off the normal subscription rate if you buy a year in advance. Uh, and then they send you other magazines during that time. Like, I don't know, gosh, I, I in a minute, I'll go look at all the other things I got over the last year. There's some good stuff in there. Like there's a there's a there's a whole uh, CAC magazine that they put out of all the CAC values. You get pictures? Uh, I don't think so. It's just priceless. That's okay. Yeah. Now, one that I like especially is coinprices.org. It's put up by Numis Media. It's updated uh, rather frequently, and uh, it's, it's fairly comprehensive. I'm going to take you over to that site real quick here if I can find this, and i got to go to the full screen. There's a full screen. Okay, Numis Media. It's coinprices.org. Let me put that over in uh, in the chat here. Hopefully that went through. Okay, Numus Media, coinprices.org is the website. And you can pull up pretty much any U.S. coin you like. It doesn't do a darn thing for Canadians or Mexicans or British or, or Russian coins or Australian stuff. But by God, if you want to look up a uh, Buffalo nickel for 1913 Type 1 in... XF, let's see, there it is, 1913 Type 1 in XF. You're able to find a pretty accurate price here. Um, $19, and that's up about 1% for the year. Well, that's not too bad, so they're within 19 cents. It's fairly accurate. I think it's quite dependable and gives a uh, an excellent reflection of real values. Uh, and uh, they're updated in real time. So I got uh, no problem with this. 
Hidden, Hidden says he gets his gray sheet weekly. So they do have a news, a weekly newsletter that you can sign up for too. That's called the weekly gray sheet. I forgot about that. But uh, this Numa site also has a dealer section where you could pay and get the wholesale prices. I think at the top, it might say something about it. There's some links up there. Um, and I, don't, I haven't used it, but I imagine that that's another good option. Uh, the only thing, uh, th this one doesn't have quite as many uh, of the varieties listed. Um, it does get all the top ones, though. So, yeah, Varieties don't often uh, trade in enough numbers to establish a, uh, uh, a practical working value. Where's that button? There it is. You don't have a lot of data points on some of these varieties where there are, you know, 15 surviving specimens. Uh, how do you come up with a market value on that when they trade once every six years, once every 12 years? What is it? Uh, uh, FIVA Stanton uses interest factor. Yeah. Yeah. Like the W's right now are, are quite crazy. Fantastic hype on the W's. People want the W's. I show you the uh, the S uncirculated quarters with far less mintage uh, by a factor of, you know, half. Uh, and they go for a dollar or two or three. Whereas Hoogie. the W's were getting 30, 40 bucks and they're dropping quickly. Hoogie says Numus Media also has historical price graphs. Yeah, NGC also. It's it's pretty cool. We're going to get into Ooh, that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, wait for that. You're going to love this. There's lots of information out there at, at our fingertips. I'm going to go back over here to the uh, the outline. Okay, let's find out where I am. Here's this screen. I'm going to shut you down again. Okay, where are we? All right. Uh, that's my preferred uh, price guide. You'll have to come up with your own. Maybe you can use the heritage uh, values for what they have for auction items. Uh, and they get into some things that trade very, very rarely. Uh, but I, those sorts of things, I don't think most people are going to be, uh, be, be trading in. Uh, we're trying to complete sets. Okay, whenever you use these price guides, you'll have to deduct heavily for problem coins. And really, how much do you deduct if the coin is scratched? Do you take off half? Do you take off more? Uh, there is a risk of buying problem coins. Resale is difficult. The market value is, is usually terrible. You might do better just to run away when you have a coin that has problems. And you know, we get a whole list of what those were up here. Blemishes, burnt, dings, bent, scrapes, scratches. The problem is that it's relative to the coin and the coin's rarity as well. You know, uh, uh, some... Uh, Degradation on uh, a chain scent is going to be a little bit different than degradation on a Kennedy half dollar, right? Yeah. Uh, lower grades, people are usually more forgiving with uh, with minor blemishes. or They'll let the blemishes climb a little more. Uh, better grades, better dates. Well, they want fewer blemishes and they'll pay better money for it. Uh, but be, people can be more forgiving of small blemishes on you know, a 1909 SVDB, uh, whereas that same blemish on a 1936 penny, they'll just you now skip that one because there's so darn many of the darn things. <laughs> Coin Dragon says, I won't be buying any more project coins anytime soon either. <laughs> After 180 hours of moving it from the freezer to the counter. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a neat one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it comes down to one simple equation. You must determine the market value of the coin based on the information available. So really having the most information is desirable. And one key aspect is going to be, ready, identification. And here's your best chance to find coins at really good prices because not every dealer is going to uh, identify a coin based on design uh, or die variety or errors. Although errors tend to stick out a little more. So if you're looking for really good deals, hunt for those cherries, hunt for those coins that you can identify further. And once you've come up with your market value based on the information you have available, stick to your price. Now you got some red flags you got to think about. Uh, 
with eBay, we've got foreign sellers. We've got people in every nation across this land, across the entire world. Um, some of these folks may not be above board. Uh, foreign sellers are tough. You've got uh, extra shipping will be involved with uh, these foreign lands. You've got money transfers going from uh, U.S. dollars into uh, into what? Uh, Indian rupees or uh, what are they using in China? Yin yangs, all those different currencies. You have trouble with that. But foreign sellers, uh, dude, you've got no way to prosecute those people if they rip you off. You've got no way to make a claim except through eBay or except through PayPal. Uh, and by gosh, they may have that absconded with those funds and shut down those accounts long before you ever received the coin. If in fact you you do receive the coin, um, watch out for foreign sellers. And eBay will tell you, you know, this guy's selling from Wisconsin or he's selling from Nepal. Uh, where are you going to buy your 1909 S penny? Maybe you should avoid the Nepal coin. Okay, you got unknown sellers. You got people that are just starting out, brand new. They haven't really uh, uh, built a reputation. They haven't really proven themselves. Um, and eBay, it's tough because nobody vets those sellers. We've got some groups on uh, on Facebook where we vet the sellers. We want to know who they are. We want to know what experience they have. Um, and we're also going to vet each coin before they uh, they post it up to, to, for sale. Uh, unknown sellers, develop that reputation. Unknown is tough. You got new discoveries that are not yet attributed. That should be a red flag for you. Uh, back in the day when the 1995 double die number one, all right, the Lincoln sent with the uh, the strong doubling on uh, In God We Trust and uh, all the other parts with that uh, Liberty, for example. Those things are selling for, for 1500 bucks, And they that price has been crashing. That was a new discovery. Got a lot of hype, right? had a lot of press coverage and well people found more and more of them the price kept coming down and coming down you can get them nowadays for for 30 bucks certified look for uh look for shipping rates as a big red flag sometimes you get a coin for a fair price uh it's a penny but it's 1050 for shipping um can, anybody want to explain why it why they're charging 1050 for shipping when it should be you know, closer to three or four dollars for shipping. I saw I saw one the other day for twenty nine dollars shipping. I was like six dollars for the coins and twenty nine dollars for shipping. Something's wrong. Nope. Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, eBay charges its fees based on the price, on the sale price. They don't charge fees based on the shipping unless they change that, and I'm sure they did. Oh, and then it said no returns down at the bottom too. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're, up, we're coming up on that one. That's another red flag coming. <laughs> Where are you here? Okay. Watch out for your hype, right? Uh, maybe it's a wild claim. You'll see them. They're talking about rare coins or estate finds or the big word of them all, unsearched. Honestly, don't believe anything in the descriptions. Look at the coin and purchase the coin. And you have to be able to grade it. Uh, and evaluate that coin based on the information available. Watch out for bells and whistles or other distractions. Maybe they're doing a video and, and showing off some neat stuff. Um, focus on the coin. Uh, watch out when they're saying it's nice or it's cool. Uh, Non-technical terms. Can I? Uh, well, go ahead. Never mind. Yeah, we got to find you here at first. <laughs> go ahead. Well... Uh, now I've completely forgotten everything I was going to say. So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was that going into the kitchen. It was something. It was something. Uh, what was the line above that last one? The the. That's funny. Bells and whistles. Yeah. Anything. Anything. Oh. Okay. Finally, f figured out my point. Unsearched. All right. All right. This is going to be a big one. So remember this one. Uh, those of you who learn how to determine a variety already have more information than a lot of coin dealers and sellers, right? When you learn to the pickup points on a coin and you learn what a variety is, you can spot that variety in the wild. Uh, you 
are now uh, a level up higher where every coin is unsearched. Every coin you come across is unsearched. All right. I don't care if they say, oh, unsearched rolls. Yes, it's BS and they're trying to sell you a roll of garbage. But what I'm trying to say is that treat all those coins as unsearched because you never know. I have found so many examples of people selling stuff on eBay. They don't know what it is and it's highly valuable. Uh, there was somebody posted a small motto, 1864 uh, two cent piece for starting bid was like 28 bucks. All right. And this is just a couple of weeks ago and it ended up selling for a hundred bucks. The coin is, uh, was at least VG if not F and worth a few hundred bucks. So, so look, and, and I bought a roll today where the dealer said it was unsearched. And of course there were, there were eight, I didn't believe him, but the price was uh, a buck. All right. And so, Hey, I can gamble a buck and I pulled 11 RPMs out of the roll. So you never know, you never know who's telling you the load of BS or not, but don't take a gamble. Keep that money for when you have better chances at getting something unsearched or understand what the dealer likes and doesn't like, um, because you can learn a lot just by talking to these guys. A lot of them won't even look at varieties. And so you know everything you buy from them is pretty much unsearched since they've held it. Uh, and that's all you can kind of depend on. You know, who's do you have firsthand knowledge of of the actual where the coins came from? Is right. that like carnal knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> I searched a bag of search coins usually means somebody's gone through there for dates and mint marks. They're looking for the rarities, right? That doesn't mean they necessarily gone through inspecting the coins. And there's a bit of a difference there. Most coins that are out there, including this bag he's holding up, have been searched probably 30 times in the past 50, 60 years. Finding those rare dates, that's tough. But uh, we've gone through boxes of pennies right here and found some wonderful dye varieties, right? Uh, we go through and cherry pick e uh, eBay, uh, me and Shay, uh, CJ. I think Coindrag has been uh, in on those blues. And we find some good, good stuff. Uh, and there's no mention of you know what we're seeing in the description. Uh, just because a dealer sells coins, doesn't mean he inspects coins. Doesn't mean he, he hunts for dye varieties. The good money is out there, but it's going to be in the dye varieties. It's it's your knowledge of uh, of these specialties that's really going to make you the, the most money. You're so going to put 10 Loomis rolls to go through. You got one of those? Uh, here it is. Yeah, so this... Oh, that one. This basically says uh pcgs ms62 brown all right there it and is i looked at this coin and immediately i saw the die crack and then i of course look it over and you know it's it's a it's a nice coin it's, it's pretty you know it's got good color it's pretty consistent there's a little little bit of stuff going on with it but then i i went in Go and, deep. Uh, I don't remember the exact number that we determined a little while ago, but look at that. It's a re repunch date. All right. And it's worth twice the value that I paid for it as a normal MS 62. And here I'm looking at the top of the one. Yep. The right side of the upper circle of the eight and the top of the six. Top of the six. Yep. And that's about what you got for for information to glean off of the off of this coin. But that's what it takes. That can be identified as a repunched date. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about buying well in just a little bit. So uh, this coin will come up again then. Yeah, that's a peach. Man, one of my best picks was uh, I was going through eBay and uh, it was just listed. It was an 1867 two cents. A guy had it for forty five dollars, and I'm looking at thinking that's a freaking double die. That's a click, click, click. I mean, I hit that mouse so hard I broke the mouse. Uh, but sure enough, that thing showed up within a week. 
I made a phone call after looking at it. I dropped it off uh, a half an hour after I opened the envelope and I got an extra 200 bucks in my pocket because it was in fact a 1967 double die. You know how many people, okay, so there's two things. There are people who have bought this book and there are people who have actually read it, okay? There is a difference. You read this book and you understand what's going on. You can spot things immediately with the pickup points just by looking at a picture. If the picture, remember, first rule, if the picture ain't good, go run away. But if you do have a good picture, inspect that coin. Uh, nobody ever knows that they have a misplaced date. They don't look in the denticles down below the date on the two cent. And you know how many of those you can find uh, just on a weekly basis that pop up? They're awesome. They're good. They have extra value. Uh, somebody thinks that there's, it's just a die scratch because they don't take the, the trouble to take a loop to the coin and realize that it's a repunch date worth whatever two or three times the value that they're thinking it's worth. So uh, the knowledge is what's going to get you there. And, and you have to read, you have to look at a lot of pictures and you have to, to write things down. If that's what it requires, eventually you're going to get a hang of it. And uh, I, I love eBay for this because you can literally look at a hundred thousand coins in the next month or two, uh, maybe not that many, but yeah. maybe you can look at, at 500 coins a day. Just look at them, everyone, click on them, look them over, and you'll start to see the patterns and what's good, you know, all the whole range of grades. You'll see that coin and all of its states of wear. You're going to learn so much just by looking at all the pictures of coins. What do you, how do you think PCGS graders get so good? They look at tens of thousands of coins on a regular basis. <laughs> so anyway, just wanted to throw that in there. Experience is going to be your best educator more than a show like this experience it's your activity is going to give you more experience uh activity breeds success get out there and do it we What's just want to point in the right direction you know just yeah. as those two and three cent coins are beginning to becoming my uh are getting to be my new favorites to hunt yeah right. they're out there. three I've cent nickels amazing number of varieties on that coin. Look at that shield nickels earlier this week uh you can find all kinds of stuff on those Okay, I'm going to reset this screen if I can figure out how to do it. There's me. And I come down. That's the wrong button. Let's see. Where is this? Um, screen. There's a the screenshot. And there's the notes. Okay. Okay. Other. We're looking at flags, right? And foreign sellers, unknown sellers, new discoveries. You might want to avoid those uh, shipping rates. You got your hype and your wild claims. Uh, sellers with uh, questionable listings. Uh, that's, that goes back to that fun, funky mercury dime with the uh, the fish lips. Uh, we found sellers where every coin that seller has is, you know, fake, garbage, frigged up. Uh, you can look at the seller history, but you cannot regard eBay's positive feedback as a useful statistic. That can be cooked. Uh, so seller history on eBay. Uh, it's 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 a useless uh, metric. Here's a big one. I put it in red. Is when the seller says no returns. Now, first off, uh, eBay. If you bought it off eBay, there is a return policy, right? Uh, but other places, uh, Facebook groups where people are selling items, uh, they don't accept returns. Huh? Why not? What's wrong with it? Uh, if you have a seller that does not accept returns, that should be the biggest flag of them all. Move on to somebody else. Now, auctions. We get a lot of auctions going on. You can go, uh, oh, estate auctions, uh, coin auctions. Uh, some shows will have auctions um, either at the beginning, usually at the end of the show, so people can look at the coins first. And you got some issues there that you have to watch out for. If you have inexperienced and uninformed bidders that you're bidding against, uh, that's gonna drive up the price. If they don't know what they're bidding on, what are, why are they bidding? It's gonna happen, man. People bid on these things for whatever reason. They all have their own reasons for bidding on coins. Some people just wanna just want attention. There are shield bidders out there. We talked about that uh, a video just, what, three days ago. And uh, eBay is a great one for, for shield bidding, where people are dri intentionally driving up the price. They're not bidding to win. They're just bidding to drive it up. 
That was uh, a great video. Yeah, it, it took a little hunting to to find a couple of uh, a couple of incidents, but you'll find it, uh, and you have to go into the statistics of uh, who's bidding, and then look at who was bidding and, and their pattern of, uh, of activity. Sometimes they only bid on, on a particular seller. And that's kind of neat when you find that. Uh, and if you see that going on, uh, you're not going to get a fair price. Uh, you're paying more than you should because somebody's driving that price up. Okay. Um, heating comments. I forget what this was about, but I included it here. I, I don't know what to say on that particular point. Well, maybe we can uh, answer a couple of questions that came in. We've got uh, Chris Garner said, uh, Ken, what about bullion dealers on eBay? Well, I know I know that I have a friend that buys bullion on eBay. Uh, he'll buy gold and he's bought the machine that he can determine whether it's real or not. He only buys gold and he buys it cheap and he just crosses his fingers. But when he gets it back, uh, he does, he goes through eBay and he returns it if it's not real. And usually, uh, he'll contact the seller first as required by eBay. And, uh, they, if they not, if they're not working with him, most of them, he says, most of them that sell the fake stuff will be like, nah, just keep it. And they refund the money because they want to continue selling to all the suckers out there that buy it, put it in the drawer and forget about it until they take it to a dealer who says, all your gold's fake, man. Yeah. Don't now do that. Guy. Once you start a case, uh, make a claim to get a refund, you can no longer place a, uh, a feedback on that seller, on that item that you, that you bought. It's that feature is gone. So again, it's, you're able to cook the books as a seller and sell fakes and get away with it. And nobody knows a thing. Huh? Yeah, you cannot trust those statistics. Seamus totally asks, any advice on eBay selling feature of allow the buyer to remain anonymous? What does this actually do and where does it show up after the sale? Let me see if I can find that. Where I had some eBay listings. Here we go. Let me pull up this one. It sold for eleven ninety seven. It's a W quarter. And Okay, 19 available, 729 sold. That's not what I'm looking for, I think. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Here's the screen. No, I'm going to have full because I'm over here. All right. Um, you're never going to see the name of the seller or the buyer, rather. You'll see the mm -hmm. seller. That's all well and good. But a lot of times it's going to be it's going to be blacked out. It's going to be no link. Let's see if I can link any of this. I can't link anything here. These are the people who purchase these coins. No, I'm not able to, to get into this information. All right. Now you can, you know, there's some of it where you can click on it and see all their his, history. Is that not working? Well, that on, on that particular case, the guy had what? 397 of the coins. So I'm trying to put one up where it's a single coin. Here we go. Single coin, this one had 19 bids. And now I can get in and have a look at, you know, who this person is. This is uh, G star 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 five. Again, we don't know who it is. It's it's kept anonymous. And we got a 30-day summary. This guy has made 32 bids on 14 different items. 6% uh, of the things he bid on were with this seller. That's a key indicator right there sometimes you'll see that is a hundred percent and uh well you've all bid on ebay you're bidding on you know 17 different things with 20 different buyers or 20 different sellers uh you're all over the place okay but this fellow bid on uh 32 bids on 14 different items by well probably 16 different sellers and here's what he bid on when he bid on it who owned it seller one through ten you know, this up is uh, a little bit hidden here, but you can see, start to see the patterns. That's the thing. Oh, where'd you go? Here's another person who bid. This is one W. And we can see his pattern. He's bidding 576 bids on 205 items. Huh? Dude, you're just bidding against yourself here. But he's got 11% activity with this particular uh, seller. He's had one retraction, so he's keeping his bids up. 
All right. You're able to uh, further identify what's going on with these bidders and who you're bidding against. <coughs> and if you see uh, one bidder with, you know, just going nuts, to, going to town with a particular seller, and it's up around 95 to 100 percent, you can figure that guy's probably, you know, driving the price up unnecessarily. He's a shill. Get out of there. When you see bad practices by other bidders, or bidders that, uh, well, they, maybe they don't know what they're doing and just driving up the price. You can figure you might not be getting a fair uh, a fair auction. Uh, get the hell out of there. Um, is there any, uh, can you go to a section that has feedback on a seller and see if you can uh, see any items that the buyer purchased from them that gave the feedback? Let me find that one that had all the coins here. Because I'm sure we'll find some on him. Uh, where to go? Oh, this one. Okay. This guy had 19 available. So Commonwealth currency. There he is right here. He's got, uh, let's see, 469 followers. Right? He's got 159 items for sale. And we can look at his feedback. There's 3,859 positive feedbacks. And one negative and four neutral. Were there more negative feedbacks that we don't hear about? Because you can you can call them up and say, hey, man, uh, I got an unfair negative feedback. They will never contact eBay and say, I got an unfair positive feedback. But you can have feedbacks removed. Okay, this was 12 months ago. What was it for? Uh, that's not uncirculated. It's cleaned. He had a 1947 French Indochina one piaster. It was cleaned, spent ninety nine fifty. Well, yeah, I'd send you know pretty trashy uh, uh, feedback on that. I don't know if this guy got a refund. I got no idea. It doesn't give me this information. But some people will eat that hundred bucks in order to leave a negative feedback. If this guy had gotten his money back, you wouldn't see this. Once you file, uh, once you file a claim with uh, eBay, you cannot any. You can no longer. Place feedback. Huh. We have four neutrals on this fellow. Okay, dealer charged me twice the shipping for items sent in one package. Oh, I've done that. I put I put up feedback such as this, made videos about it, and that feedback is missing. Hmm. Uh -huh. Where'd the feedback go? I left a negative feedback. I, I know they have. Subject. They have services out there that, that retailers and people can use to go clean history for them. And they uh, they work with the, you know, the companies that have them and get them scrubbed. They file all the paperwork and they do all the things. And, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't want to hassle with following up, then I'm sure they remove the listing, the, the feedback. You can get feedback taken down. Mm -hmm. You won't take down the positive, but you'll take down the negative for sure. Uh, how many did he actually have? We have no idea of ever figuring out, you know, what's missing. What It's gone. It's hidden. Uh, that's why I say this statistic is meaningless. Okay, let's get on with that. And I'm going to go find my way back to notes here. Fix this screen. There's that. Cool, Seamus. Okay, let's see. And get the screenshot so we can get the notes full up. Okay. Okay, bidding includes other considerations. Where are you here? Oh, um, more flags. Okay. And here you get into nonlinear bidding. They're bidding not for a particular reason, but they're throwing in things like uh, channel support. Now, here's something you're getting on, on, e on YouTube that you don't get on uh, auctions at uh, at coin shows so you don't get at auctions at uh, estate sales is you have channel support being included in a bid <coughs> excuse me what's happening here uh, well effectively it's a it's a form of shilling uh, you're not bidding on the coin you're bidding on the coin plus you love the channel so damn much I just want to bid a little extra huh. when you see that sort of thing going on, you're not getting a square deal. Uh, it's going to drive up the price. Just walk away. If you're looking for price, 
All right. If you're looking for the fair price for that coin, uh, this is going to drive it up. If you uh, you have a fan of the seller bidding extra because he just I just love your show or what you do, uh, it's it's driving up the price. Yeah, I have to I have to talk about this one because when Ken said it, um, you know, I I felt like oh my gosh, you know, I. I uh, frequent Copper Coins auctions all the time, and I love to buy his stuff. I am a fan. He has good coins. He has good deals. And um, he made me a moderator a long time ago so I could help him with some of the, the, the Streamlab stuff and configuration. And it hadn't taken me off, but I don't know. I participate in those auctions. Uh, and when Ken said that, I was like, you know, I, I probably need to reach out to to Copper Coins to to Chuck and and say, hey, um, for these auctions that I participate in, once you remove me that way, there's no uh, no ill thoughts because I would never want to do such a thing, and and uh, that would that would probably be a good thing. So um, I I wasn't aware of this. I'm really glad glad that Ken brought it to my attention. So um, you know. Hey, uh, sometimes it can be innocent, and sometimes it might not be. You never know. So, well, if the person is charged with uh, moderating a channel, I think they they would do well to to uh, recuse themselves from bidding on items being sold by that channel. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we could have a separation in there. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube is a new thing as far as selling the coins. We have only started to see uh, sellers. Right. Um, there's going to be plenty more. The incentive is there. Gosh, you can you can pull in a couple of grand in an evening. Right. Yeah. Do it on a Facebook. It take you take you weeks of posting stuff. It's so much easier to, to offer coins up for sale on YouTube. And we're going to see this. And it's, and it's, it's coming. Wait for it. Now, how you buy your coins is going to have a great impact on the price you're going to pay. OK. You go to a coin show, you've got the coins in hand. You can look at that coin in person up front. You've got a loop in one hand, a coin in the other. You got the, the seller right in front of you. You look at them in the eye. And this is your best chance to get the best prices, honestly. Um, it's that personal interaction that makes it all possible because now the art of negotiation comes into bear. And by gosh, if this guy's in a hurry, he's got to use the bathroom or get out of there to get to his daughter's wedding or something. Uh, and you can pick up on this information. Maybe you've got an, an advantage for negotiation. Hey, man, I can give you 60% uh, of the value of this going right now. And you can close up and get going for the night. Uh, coin shops. OK, same idea, but the prices are a little bit more iffy. Right. I've got a local guy in town in this town. Mostly he just collects gold and silver. He's looking for gold and silver to resell and people bring in coins as you know, a side benefit. He doesn't really deal with the darn things. He doesn't have a lot of stock and what he does have. Okay. I can get pretty darn good prices on that stuff, but the coin shops have a lot more uh, overhead that they have to meet. Uh, so how does that coin shop make their money? Is it, is it buying and selling coins? Uh, is it a gift shop or a, a flea market shop? And they also have coins, an antique store, and they have a few coins. Um, they're all over the place, really. Uh, coin shows are still the place to get the best darn prices. Oh man, I tell you what, when it when it when you ask the price on something, and and somebody says, "Well, I have it listed at this, but make me an offer," and uh, I feel like selling coins today. Whoo! Go for it, man. Go for it. <laughs> We're going to sell uh, coins today. Yeah. Come it's on. like, oh, I want to buy some coins today. <laughs> um, look, you you never know. Uh, some dealers are so tight, they don't want to budge five, $5. Maybe they priced all their coins at their minimum price. But you don't know until you ask. Uh, it was a perfect example today. Okay. I walk up to a table. I ask them. Uh, I'm looking for a... Uh, a uh, a 1937 Texas commemorative and nobody's got them. All right. Everybody's got 34, 35, 36. They don't have a 37. I just checked every table. Anyway, I said, well, I'm also looking uh, for stone mount because I've been searching every show. I've been searching for a double to die stone mount. 
And he goes, oh, well, yeah, I got one of those. And he pulls it out and I'm looking at it. It's 60 bucks. And, and I say, well, uh, you know, this is, this is a, a beautiful coin. Uh, is there anything that you can do for me on the price? And he goes, man, man, uh, 60. I mean, that, that, that's the price I, I, I came with. That's the price uh, I want to sell it at. The guy next to him at the table next door says, oh, hey, I got some stone mountains. If you don't want that one, I guess they were kind of buddies and he was just picking on him. But I go over, he hands me a coin, a stone mountain, and it's the double to die. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, okay, I want that one. And, and then he gave me a deal on top of it. And, you know, I'm like dancing out of the coin show going, I just got the best coin I've been looking for for two years. So you never know. Ask the dealer. Um, so do, should I show the other deal of a lifetime? Yeah, let's see. Right. So um, I, I was telling Ken that you know, you, if you guys watch Ken's big show, then you're familiar with the concept of the kitty. Uh, well, I've. I've kept a little kitty with me to, uh, that I stuff in there. Whenever I go to a coin show, if I don't spend the money, I stick it in the back into the kitty. Um, and, and this uh, allows me to build up something that when I'm in the right place at the right time, I can exploit an opportunity that is made available to me. Uh, uh, one it, note here, never let the wife know you have a kitty. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. No. Uh, I know, I know a lady who had this interesting uh, yarn, uh, uh, not a painting, but a, like an abstract art thing on the wall. And uh, every every week, she would stuff like twenty dollars, roll it up, and stick it into the thing. And uh, apparently, she saved up quite a bit of money. <laughs> anyway, that's off topic, but. Uh, I was able to get a coin I would never normally afford, but it was the deal that says, make me a deal or, or give me an offer. I want to sell coins today. Um, and I'll show you what I picked up from him at Wholesale Bid. You might want to make that big. I'm making it big. Can you hear the angels chanting? Oh. <laughs> A nineteen thirty-two double dial verse number one. In in MS sixty-four. Red. Red. <laughs> yeah, that's a peach. So uh, I also know a little history about the coin. He's had it since he was a kid, a kid, and he just he just a few years ago got it slabbed and has been holding on to it. But this is a treasure from his childhood that he's held on to all these years. And I'm like, uh, I'm gonna take care of it. It's mine. <laughs> Isn't it just gorgeous though? Uh, and and I and I, he gave me such a good deal on it, and I don't know how much of it was. He uh, he knows I'm a variety hunter, and that I really appreciate coins like that, <laughs> or that he wanted to sell coins today, right? Uh, and so he gave me the deal of a lifetime that I just couldn't pass up. So, uh, but had I spent all my money on auctions buying overpriced stuff. Uh, or spending all my money on things I didn't have a plan for, I would not be able to keep a kitty in order to take advantage of the opportunity presented to me at the show. So there you go. That was the whole thing. Man, save money. Get tight. Yeah. Don't spend too much so you can get more. Uh, that's kind of the whole idea here. Okay, I want to get back to the, uh, the outline here. So, okay, I got to press. This button. Right. Those gas station hot dogs are uh, absolutely fantastic with the, the cheese on top, Jeff. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So coin shows, yeah, you can get your best, best prices at coin shows. You're up close, in person, talking with a seller four feet away. And by gosh, it's all about uh, negotiation. Coin shops, same idea, but a little more iffy flea markets 
Well, that's anything can happen today. Uh, do they have coins at a flea market? Sometimes. Antique shops, same idea, sometimes. How about yard sales? Uh, now, this is neat. Ask the seller if they have any coins, and they might just say, wait a minute, I've got some stuff in a cigar box. Uh, it's in a closet. Give me a minute. I'll be right back. And I run in, come back out, and you say, I'll give you $5 for all of it. And they say, yeah, I'll take it. And, of course, sometimes I got nothing. Uh, yard sales are awesome because they oftentimes don't have any clue what they have. So is, are you taking advantage of the uh, of the seller in that particular case? Yeah, to some degree, but a lot of times they're going to be happy just to move that, that stuff out. Uh, I, uh, Facebook, you're interactive. Go ahead. I, uh, I, I go to do the yard sales all the time and i always ask uh do you have any silver i've had guys run back run in and run back out with a little baggie of silver mercs or silver quarters and they're like is this, is this good i'm like oh yeah i love that yeah yeah and they're like what do you pay me for it well and i usually give them somewhere around milt or something because it's usually not that great of stuff it's been it's been in the drawer for years uh but anyway i i try I usually tell them, like, I, I honest to God, if, if I pulled out a 1972 double to die obverse like that, I wouldn't pay them a penny for it. I, I would I would actually tell them what they have and explain that they need to, to, to take care of it or, or what to do. Um, because that's the way you get somebody to call you again next time, uh, right? Don't take advantage of, of, of people. Um, to some degree, uh, you know, sure, I could take that bag of silver home, the junk silver, and look, and maybe I find an RPM or a double die. But, uh, you know, it's still milt. It's still like junk silver. So um, it's not huge. But at, at what point do you have to tell yourself that it would just be unfair to, uh, you know, rip somebody off? And you never know. That stuff will come back and bite you. Um, I know recently uh, somebody found a lottery ticket in the uh, in the dumpster. The guy that actually had the lottery ticket knew he did. He accidentally threw it away, contacted the lottery. So when this guy turned it in, they had to struggle and went into a legal battle for a long time before finally deciding to just split the pot. But still, I don't, that sort of makes a point uh, that I'm getting at, but you never know what's going to come back. You know, what if you found a hundred thousand dollar coin in somebody's little lunch baggie that they handed you at a yard sale? And then they found out later that you sold the coin for, for a hundred thousand dollars or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, just be honest. That's, you can never go wrong being honest. There it is. Uh, it's opportunism. At what point does it make sense to take the windfall? The guy doesn't know what he had, didn't really care. Sold you the whole box at the fleet at the yard sale for you know five dollars for everything. Um, is that opportunism, or should you you know bring it up and say, dude, I got this coin, I made you know a hundred thousand dollars on it. Here's here's your share, uh, in the hopes that maybe he's got more. Or maybe he'll come back with other people. Um, there is greater opportunity to be had a lot of times just by being honest and upfront. Seriously, don't burn those bridges. They can be darn handy for you. Yeah. Karma. Karma. Work the karma. Most of the successful people that have been involved in coins for, for decades have built up these networks. They know everybody in town. Uh, and everybody in town knows that this guy's not going to stick it up your ass. He's going to give you a fair break. He's going to treat you the way you need to be treated and should be treated for the valuable items that you have. Hmm. And that's reputation. And you cannot buy a reputation. Hmm. Can't. No. The only way to get that is to earn it. So short term, yes, you can buy it. Long term, it never works out in the end. Yeah. You're always going to do better to uh, to build that reputation. Okay, I'm going to go back to single and wait a minute. This button, man, I need two screens. Are we here? Yep. Okay, good. 
Okay, how you're buying, uh, we'll start back up again, will determine a lot of times uh, the type of deal you can get. Facebook is interactive. Again, here you have a chance because it's interactive uh, to build a reputation. Uh, you can get to know these sellers of coins. And maybe they, they like dealing with you. You're close, you're handy, uh, you never complain, you got what they're, uh, you have what they're selling. Maybe they want to deal with you more. Uh, websites, they're not always as responsive, right? People have different websites are selling coins. Um, well, you're down to email and talking back and forth. It's hard to look at the coin up close in person uh, unless you actually buy the darn thing. Uh, we're getting into this new one, which is YouTube, and we've got more sellers are popping up all the time. Well, how do you establish a reputation with a seller on YouTube when all you have on your on your end as a buyer is is uh, text and chat? Uh, maybe you can contact them with uh, with email and start up a dialogue there. Uh, all these different venues have different uh, advantages and disadvantages. If you're buying from friends and family, again, you've got that karma thing. You've got that opportunism available. Uh, is your aunt? You know, trying to help you out. Oh, I got some old coins. You can have these. There's a whole bunch. My grandmother left them to her, uh, and it's your grandmother too. So you just take them and do them, do what you please. Uh, or do you treat your family right? Geez, I can't think of uh, screwing my brother over, unless he wanted me to help him with his shed. Uh, okay, auctions. I would just to make up for that. The uh, thing he did with my underwear, pulling it over my head when I was six. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> he owes me. <laughs> okay. Uh, eBay, you've got the issue there where they're, the sellers are not vetted. Um, gosh, what are you buying? And eBay, I always see is uh, that is free whale. People are putting things up there because they have no better option as far as selling the darn things. Uh, mm -hmm. I always considered eBay to be free whale. If you're buying up of there, go for the best value. And still, there's ways that uh, that the sellers can screw with those prices. Okay, you know, there were some more ways um, that I I wanted to tell you about. I and completely forgot to uh, let go is another one, right? Like uh, you can now have these, these apps where you can see in your local area and you can type in coin and you can see all the people in your area that are posting stuff. Of course, Craigslist is another place. Um, and we don't often talk about that uh, because of all the crazy things that have happened to people going to meet somebody for Craigslist. Uh, that's a neat thing is when you, when the seller wants to meet the buyer for whatever particular reason, look, it's $3 to ship stuff across town or $4 to ship across state. Right. <laughs> um, you get that man watch if you ever have to meet the seller in a particular location do it in a restaurant yeah um, uh, I, I actually did one one time where the seller uh, met people in Randall's they have an in, inside because Randall's always have tons you know, grocery stores always have a ton of people uh, but I still don't think it was that smart because you know I know this guy's got $500 worth of coins and he, if I say no, he's got to walk him back to his car through the parking lot. So I mean, still just be careful, please. Um, you never know. There's not, you're not always going to meet somebody like me on the other side when you post stuff for sale. And, and same with the buyer. You're not always going to uh, meet a good seller. Uh, maybe they're just trying to get somebody to come in that's holding a bunch of cash to buy some coins. And now they just hold you up and take your money. Uh, you know, people don't always think through those things. Uh, but you should. Uh, CJ said something like uh, the let go and Craigslist and offer up are all garbage. I mean, I kind of treat them like Etsy or, uh, you know, there, there's never not really any good deals to be had. Um, I do see some people selling entire collections and that might be something to think about. But you can talk to them. You can interact with them in those apps. And that's what's new and good, right? Like Facebook is that you can ask them questions and and ask them to post more pictures and that sort of thing. But you're still, the risk level is much higher because you got to meet them. Or maybe you can arrange. Maybe you can say, hey, man, I don't want to come meet you. Would you ship it to me? Are there, are there pictures good enough? You know, I've seen underwear sell on Let Go. 
just to give you an idea. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know how. I don't know why. It's just part of human nature. I, like I get there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get back to work over here. Let's see if we can make this work. Oh, one more. One more. There it is. Can we see it? Yep, you're on. Okay, when you're buying um, the seller, you got some demands you should probably have of the seller. The seller should show the coin well enough for the buyer to determine the grade and inspect it for blemishes, right? Uh, I've talked about the selfies they take. They're perfect selfies. If their photos are not good enough that you can determine the grade and, and inspect it for blemishes, walk away. They should have clear, upright, cropped photos without distractions, right? Uh, you know, lint across the coin. That's a bit of a distraction. Are you covering something? Um, a seller should point out issues on the coin. If they're, if the proofs are milky, the seller should probably point that out. Uh, if there's a, uh, a hole in it. Oh, yeah, by the way, there's a hole in the darn thing. If there's a reserve price on an auction, the seller should let you know. Because otherwise, what are you bidding on if you don't know if there's a, you know, what is the reserve? What is it? Is it a secret? How about just start at the reserve price for the bidding? If there's a maximum price on some items, I think would be a delight for a lot of sellers. Uh, and this would keep the bidding from getting out of hand. Now, on uh, more common dates, uh, modern coins, you know, the past uh, the past 75 years, uh, yeah, I could see a max price being uh, being appropriate so that the bidding does not get out of control, especially when they're throwing uh, channel support and uh, fan support uh, at the coins have a maximum price and when you reach that maximum price that coin ought to be sold rather than see it go for two three four times market value they should have a reasonable starting bid on auction items uh, the seller is fully culpable in knowing what he's selling and what it should uh, should uh, what the market value should be and when they're starting the bidding above market value uh, that's kind of unfair for an auction I would think Let's see. Uh, a seller should let you know if they they will entertain offers for unsold items. Now, here's an opportunity as a buyer. Uh, geez, nothing sold or that item didn't sell. Here's what I can do for you and contact them by email. A seller should use a recognized method of payment. Um, PayPal, for example, uh, and friends and family is, I would say, the, the preferred method. Uh, no, wait, I said that wrong. Goods and services, I would say, is the preferred method. Friends and family, you're jeopardizing, uh, the seller would be jeopardizing his own account. And what are you going to say, 3%? It may not be worth it here. Hey, Cam, before we uh, move on, can I ask you a question about the, uh, so so one of the items that you talk about there is the, uh, you know, the max price. So, but we've been we we see these mega auctions at Heritage and these other places where they don't have a max bid. They want to maximize the amount of money the sellers get getting. Yep. We're yep. talking about coins that are like rare, like thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Those are coins with uh, serious numismatic importance. Those are coins that are that are truly rare, where there are ten specimens and they don't come up for auction daily. Something like say. Uh, a 1972 proof set. I always use that as an example. Where there are millions of the darn things, they are common. They are effectively a commodity item, right? Uh, something like that should have a maximum value, a maximum price. You've got something that's worth, say, four to five dollars. Normally, a gray sheet is what? Two seventy two. Two seventy five. Yeah. Two seventy five. Right. Yeah, you might have a maximum value. When you reach that, say, $5, that item is sold. Uh, I've seen these things go for, you know, $10, $15, $20, $20 $22 I've seen these things go for. It's a $5 item. What? Well, into, you know, is the, is the seller reputable? Uh, he's hurting himself when he, when he you know, the seller is. Some of it might be, you know, channel support. I mean, I get there. There are gamers out there that will play a game, and people just throw money at them for hours. I want to do that. Five here, ten here, and 
And so, you know, there's there's that uh, because they're getting recognition by somebody that they feel is maybe a little bit more famous. They're getting recognition in a chat among people that are like the same thing they do. Uh, you know, maybe there is that. Uh, maybe you're, you know, you can always just send the person a PayPal and say, here's 20 bucks, man, because I love what you do. Keep up the good uh, work. Don't bid up, don't bid up an auction to 25 or $30 on a 275 item. A two dollar and seventy five cent item. If you know it's not good, then don't participate. But I, I don't know. I'm not saying don't support channels because there's a lot of great support. But I don't know if buying an item at an at a higher price than you should just to support the channel is the right thing to do or not. I guess that's just something you're going to need to mull over. You know? We're going to look at that. Uh, we're going to look at the figures in just a bit about you know what happens when you buy something for that much. Uh, Hmm. What else could you have with the same amount? Okay, we'll get back into that. You know, the graph is coming. Oh yeah. Okay, here's this, and here's where's the screen? Is that it? Okay. We want to compare those items to you know the, compare those prices to other similar coins. Uh, you got eBay, the sold listings. We can compare the value uh, to. We can compare. Uh, prices by other internet sellers like AppMax or Provident or or particular sellers of, uh, of uh, individual coins like Verge Marshall, right? Magazine ads. The U.S. Mint, uh, you'll find things being sold on eBay, on Facebook, on YouTube that are still available at the U.S. Mint at issue price. Huh. And you're getting a premium form on your sale. Uh, is the buyer doing his homework? Okay, Google is always your friend. What can you expect to pay for a similar coin is what we're getting into. This, where is the graph picture? Oh, that's coming up, okay. So we're at, uh, why are you buying? Now for most people, we have a linear buying method, a pragmatic approach to buying coins, and that is to use that coin as an investment vehicle. Right. The idea is uh, it's going to, to outperform inflation or you can get better return on your investment on a coin than you would get in, say, a savings account or a money market account. Coins are an investment. Now, those really rare, uh, the coins that they sell on Heritage. Yeah, those are always on sale, man. But still, you have some fl price fluctuations. People buy coins because they're available. Well. Is it available because it's rare and that's why they got to have it right now or are they buy it just because it's in front of them and by God, I got to have it. it's really nice. It's really shiny. Maybe they want to complete a set. Okay. They're buying it for fun or a gift or it's a novelty. Uh, people are buying coins because they hoard coins or they stack silver, for example. Uh, a lot of people that are new to the hobby are buying coins because, well, more is better. Uh, give me more. I got to have more of these coins. I need 30,000 wheat pennies. Hmm. And sometimes here you'll just buy the darn things, uh, not because they're rare or valuable or you need them to complete a set, but just because the idea is more must be better. Uh, impulse buying uh, has a lot to do with uh, uh, driving bids, driving prices. Uh, people see it and they want it right now because, well, there's nothing else going on at two o'clock in the morning. You got to ask yourself, is this the kind of thing that you collect? I see folks uh, bidding on, uh, oh, RPMs and double dies. And there's a lot of hype coming around on that. And they are more rare. Uh, they are uh, few and far between a lot of these in particular. Oh, the 1910 S over inverted S is a neat thing. Um, there aren't that many known. I, I picked up a, a 1911 S RPM number one uh, not too long ago. And then you're talking about coins with a couple of hundred surviving specimens. Uh, they start to get kind of rare. Uh, I like those early mint marks. That's the kind of thing I like to, uh, to collect, uh, those early RPMs and varieties. Uh, but if somebody doesn't collect RPMs, what are you doing in the what are you doing in that auction uh some people are buying because they want to show off they want to pull it out and see who's got the bigger one and show up the next guy they're not bidding to get the coin at the right price 
They're bidding to beat the other bidder. Huh. Now that I see as a problem uh, because now you have personality uh, getting involved. And really, you're not in it to buy the coin. Uh, that's one upmanship. And I call these uh, non pragmatic buyers. They're not looking at the investment of the coin. Uh, they're buying for other reasons than the value of the coin. And if they're including other reasons, uh, it's anything can happen day, man. You don't know where that bid's going, where it's coming from. And quite frankly, the bidding is going to get out of control real fast. You got two people trying to beat each other just to see who's the better man. Uh, Walk away from that auction because that's just going to – what are you bidding against? Hey, uh, Tim Rathjen just came in the chat and said, uh, where did you get that 11S over S? <laughs> I got it from Tim Rathjen. <laughs> I got another 11S from him this week. It's a number two RPM. I got yeah. both of them from you, Tim. <laughs> he showed me some of the things that he's been getting from you, Tim. That's awesome. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. <laughs> Man, Tim moves too much stuff to, to pick over. I've got a 10S number two from you. Uh, I don't know what else I got. I'd love to find them. They're on the desk here somewhere. I swear it. Uh, thanks for coming to the class, Tim. Uh, thanks for coming. L ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim Rathjen. Give me a – there you go. He's the developer, developer of the Luxy app where you can take your cell phone, take a picture of the coin, and your cell phone will think about it real hard and tell you what it is, what grade it is, uh, and what it's worth. Now, I guess there's still some more data to add to that, but it's doing most U.S. coins at this point. And plus, you get the really cool stickers. I put them all over my house. There's one back. Well, it's back there somewhere. They make great little props. So I like to I like to do this. That's a cloud, and magic happens there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. There you go. <laughs> Your picture goes in. Something good happens, and it comes back. <laughs> magic happens there. <laughs> yeah, Tim's listening while he's grading out some coins. There's no end to it. Okay, I'm going to get back to uh, the outline because we're getting into the fun and exciting. Yeah, part. this is the fun part. There okay. are consequences. Are we still on? Oh, there. Single. I think we're here. You're here. Okay, non-pragmatic bidders. Dude, there's nothing I can do to help you with that. If you got people bidding for whatever reason that doesn't make sense, uh, you're going to be paying too much if you try to be beat them. Um, really, try going back and, and watch some of these live auctions and watch how you're bidding. Right. See how you're bidding against uh, other people and, uh, you know, review your own practices. And would you repeat your bidding practices or would you change the way you're bidding on coins? Because a lot of times, uh, say eBay, for example, if you're bidding repeatedly, you are driving up the price on that coin and you're bidding effectively against yourself every time you bid uh, on eBay. I don't bid till there's eight seconds left. Make one bid. Remember that at the top we talked about it? Where was that back up here? Determine your price and stick to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've lost that. Go in with a plan. There it is. Determine the market value of the coin based on the information available and stick to your price. If you keep bidding up, bidding up, and bidding up, you're bidding against yourself. And, dude, you could have twice as many coins if you only paid half as much. Okay, I'm well, gonna come back down. With, uh, with YouTube these days, you can re-watch an auction that you went to and participated in and watch yourself in the in the chat replay and think to yourself, did you do the right thing? Did you, yep. you know, I, what can you do better next time to maybe get a better price or or uh or you know, well, we'll get to that, but um yeah, that's a that's a great thing with YouTube is you can play it back and watch what you did. Yeah, are you getting involved in the excitement, right? Are you getting caught up in the thrill of the bid and you're letting it get ahead of yourself? Okay, here, we're going to come up with the price of the coin. A girl asked me, should I include shipping in the price of the coin, the price that I paid? 
Absolutely, you, sh you should. You should have the, the, the sale price, the shipping, the taxes, and the fees. Whatever it costs you for that coin is the total price you paid. All right, now we're going to compare that price you paid with a fair market value, which you determined earlier, right? And we'll take a little formula. We've got the total price divided by fair market value. So let me pull up a calculator. Okay, come on. Here it is. Okay, you, you get the total price. You paid $14, right? And you figure the fair market value is $16. 14 divided by 16, and I get this number. It's ready? 0.87, 87%. Well, let's see. How's that work? If it's over 1.1, you figure something's not right. Uh, you're not. You cannot. You're not going to recover this. Uh, if the total that that coin is going to cost you exceeds what you consider to be the fair market value by more than 10 percent, you might want to just run away from that. Uh, it's going to be uh, sometimes years before you can recover that. Okay. If your uh, figure comes up at anywhere from 90 to 110 percent. Uh, of the fair market price, you figure that's right in the price range, okay? That's probably about right. I've seen coins being sold for three, four, five times that fair market value. They will never get that money back. That's money shot down, okay? If your figure is less than 90%, well, first off, take another look at those figures. But you're getting into good price territory here, and we got that graph. Um, this one. Can we see this okay? Do I need a bigger screen? Oh, let me move it around. I must have been wiggling. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's your formula, right? You, you divide the uh, the fair market, uh, you divide the price of the coin by the fair market value, and you pr you're probably going to be anywhere from 90 to 110 percent, right? Uh, what you you know, expect to pay versus what you expect it's worth. It's probably going to be somewhere in this green area. I could probably move that down. There you go. No, nope, that didn't work. How do I do this? No, nope. wait. There, somewhere around here is the green zone, and you're paying fair value for that. Uh, if your figure is going to be much more than 110% of the value or higher, uh, no, X, that's the big red X. And I'm going to change that because this really needs to come further over. There you go. Much above 110% of the value, you're paying way too much, and you will be hard-pressed to ever get your money back for that sort of thing. The sweet zone is down here, right? My target is 70%. I'd like to pay 70% um, out of pocket, including shipping and whatever else for fees. I like to pay no more than 70%. 70%. 60 is better. Uh, 75, 80, yeah, yeah, I'll go there uh, if I think I can flip that coin over. But this is really good stuff. But the really, really wonderful stuff is when you can get it for half price or lower, right? And you're going to get that by uh, by cherry picking. That's where the dealer has misidentified his coin. And you can say, aha, uh -huh, I know what that is. It's a double die number two, right? Or 1972 double die number one. <laughs> and the guy didn't know what he had. Yeah. And I got he's willing to let it go for this crazy price, not knowing that it's fully worth, you know, uh, what? Double what he's selling it for. Well, I find it interesting that like PCGS and Annex and NGC, they'll let you just specify, you know, the the variety type as opposed to the actual variety because that costs another 15 bucks to designate this specific variety. Uh, so a lot of times I've picked up some nice two cent pieces that just said RPD, but the seller didn't know that it was RPD 001, a best of variety. And, uh, you know, they didn't, and they didn't look at the coin. They're just passing labels. They're selling slabs. Uh, and that's okay. That's good for us because we're all swimming around in a big pond trying to find the, our, our, our worm. So anyway, the, the thing is that the labels uh, may not always be correct. I found plenty of examples. I've shown them on my show uh, where a fully graded coin, it's beautiful, and they didn't say anything about the variety at all. <laughs> yeah. 
a lot of slab coins that people don't know what they have, and they send it in to be send it in to be certified. And by God, you can cherry pick slab coins, and that boy, that is a good money maker. That's my favorite thing to do. Yep, it's thrill. It's it's a thrill. It's a thrill to hunt and a thrill to find and walking out of a show feeling like, yep, yeah, I got some good deals today. Oh, Quads is asking about uh, OBW rolls. What about rolls? What a great question. You know, Man. Uh, you know, I think that in some cases, let's say you had a, a roll in 1955. All right. Yeah. It would be beyond my, it would be beyond means uh, to be able to afford a whole roll to go search. But I could afford the scratch off or buying one as an opportunity to get something. Um, but am I willing to play three to five times the amount a single BU coin is worth? Well, I guess you have to decide if that's what you want to do with your money. Um, and, and I think it's great. I, it's, it's a good business model in my, in, in, in my thinking, because, uh, dealers and people who sell those roles can make a little bit more money on selling the roles, uh, to support their, their business. And, but, and it's also giving people an opportunity that can afford to get a, a, a beautiful BU DDO number one giving them an opportunity to maybe get lucky and get the lottery ticket. It's the odds are better. I mean, a lottery ticket is, or uh, let's say the Powerball is one in 60 million chance that you'll win anything. So uh, one in 50, that's pretty good odds. Um, but you're still remember that those 50 coins in that role are still uh, how many were minted in the first place. Was it 1.2 million? Uh, how many surviving specimens are there? How many known? And and figure out what is the ratio of varieties to total mintage, and then apply that to that role and think of whether you you uh, have a chance or not. All right, just go into it. Don't go into it blind. If if a variety is not found in one in ten thousand, do you think you're going to find it in one in fifty? Maybe. Maybe. But it's really neat that if you get a hit. The way they produce these things, sometimes you get multiple examples in that same role. Yeah, and it's really great when you have a trusted dealer that knows what he's doing and can verify the lineage of these roles and where they're coming from. So you just you got to be really careful where you do business. So know who you're dealing with when you buy those roles. So when they reassembled and already inspected, eh, maybe. I know who you're getting them from. If the same dealer also sells, uh, if the same seller also sells dive varieties as well as BU rolls, scratch your head and think, has he been <laughs> inspected already? Because he's got he's got all these 1955D RPM number twos, and the roll the end of these rolls are kind of screwed up. Um, well, why are you buying the rolls? But uh, a lot of these OBW rolls I'm seeing on some sales are just getting uh, getting way, way out of place. Where's that? Uh, here we go. Here's a listing. Let me take you over here. When they don't open them up for you on air so you can see. Oof. Yeah, here we go. I've got a list over here. It's a dealer. Uh, just a regular website. Guy sells coins. And he's got some BU rolls for sale. You know, um, 1962D, a uh, couple of bucks, right? 1974D, pretty common date there, a couple of bucks. 1975, a couple of bucks. I've seen some of these rolls go for $20, $30 on some of these video channels. Look, um, look at that bag. Look at that bag. Your cursor is over. Oh, oh, oh the 289 oh, for a bag. Yeah. I want that bag. That's 5,000 pennies. Yeah. Yep, those are yeah, oh, geez, and you go blind looking at those. Come on, uh, you can get these BUs a lot of time, uh, a lot of times for, for pretty darn reasonable prices. I think I picked up some, uh, yeah, I picked up some of the 2009s just so I could put together some oh, yeah. eight sets. Yep, because he doesn't always have all eight. No, I'm I'm really happy to see it. I love the site that he's using. I, I 
I do that. I use that all the time. Yeah, all <laughs> he kind knows of me my name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the earlier BU rolls. Uh, I've seen them as far back as 38. Right now, it looks pretty scant. Usually, he's got a lot more 50s. Uh, and sometimes they're getting pretty pricey up in here. Yeah. I think his, his shipping costs are a little heavy, but, well, it's tough. But if the the brawl prices aren't too bad at all. But you know, a couple three bucks is normal for these uh, for these B rolls. Maybe some of the S's, right? Seventy S. I don't have one here. He's got a roll of proofs. Seventy S. They they tend to get more like five to seven, but they don't get you know twenty five to thirty seven. Uh, you know what else can you get the rolls for? And geez, if they're paying 25 bucks for rolls, why I'm in the wrong business. Maybe I should be into that. There's some opportunism going on. I mean, really, they're just gonna cut their own throats if they keep it up. All right. But I look at uh I look at trying to buy these things for 70% of what I think the fair market value is, uh, with the intention of resale. Now, some people they want to keep that coin for you know for years, and that price doesn't matter so much to them. I want to take you over and show you some values on where is it? Here we go. NGC. What do we got here? All right. NGC. I've got a 1910 S in MS65. And I get these great price charts involved here. Okay. I'm going to take it back 10 years here. Um, you're looking at, now, 15 years ago, these things were selling for 130 bucks in MS65 Brown, and the late price is 295. Uh, price really doesn't matter if you're not going to sell them. You're still looking at holding that coin for decades or, or you know, centuries and leaving it to your grandchildren. Uh, if you're not getting a, a good, fair price in your coin. You're not going to recover that investment. You do better off to put the money in a bank account and let let the interest grow and leave that to your grandchildren. Uh, but if you can get those coins at a fair price and flip them over, where'd my chart go? That's where you can really take advantage of this spread. Get them in, get them out. Hmm. So that was fantastic. Like that, that if, if the buyer, I mean, it's like stock, right? Like would you, if you had bought Amazon, you know, when they first started, you would, and a lot of Amazon, you would probably be wealthy. But, uh, you know, if you had bought Toys R Us, maybe not, right? Uh, so you never know where it's going to go. But if you buy well, you sort of pad yourself or insulate yourself from those highs and lows. Uh, and, and hopefully you end up on top over time, but my goodness, that still was not, um, you know, if, what if, what if that person had paid three or $300 over the price at the time and didn't know it. Uh, and now it's taken 10 years and they still are just now getting back to where it's covering the co the original cost. Now, how many things do you know like that that you can invest in that have a better return, right? Uh, so really important to know what you're buying and buy at the right price so that you don't, uh, so it can actually be worth something someday uh, to the kids, to the ones you love, the people you leave it to, however you, whatever you're buying for, uh, just make sure you buy right, you know? The only metric I have to you know make sense out of why you would pay so much for a coin is its its market value, its retail value. Uh, if you give it some other esoteric value, such as my grandfather sold me that gave me this coin, uh, I cannot quantify that. So I have to use uh, market value as as the metric. Everybody's dying, dying. I mean, dying. They're all asking, "What is that site?" <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. It's somewhere out there. <laughs> I don't divulge my sources. We, 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 we. <laughs> I'd probably get you some rolls for like 18 bucks a roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, let me see where we are here. Uh, see, grab. Okay. All right. Now we're up to post purchase. Okay. There's the screen. Is that the right one? I'm going to click on so much stuff here. It's killing me. 
<laughs> Can we see this all right? Yeah, you're in. Okay, we did the graph part. All right, post-purchase, you have the coin in hand. Inspect it, please. Take a good, hard look at what you just bought now that you have it. It finally showed up in the mail. Is it what you expected? Uh, you, you had the photos. You looked at them. You used the best information you had available. And you have to ask, is it worth at least what you paid? Uh, and if it's not, sometimes the only way to recover that investment is to send that thing back. I've ordered stuff, and it shows up, and it's been frigged. It's, but there have been problems that were not visible in the images. Uh, and the only way to get you know anywhere close to my money back is send it back because it, it will be impossible to market that coin and break even. So we go back into that one of those flags we saw earlier, the no returns policy. Uh, watch out for that. That will sting you if you go after uh, sellers that don't have a return policy. And that there other thing... There. That other thing that you said, too, about uh, you can assess your own coin collection now. Oh, practice. And Buy practice. It. And learn whether you did good or not. Learn what your mistakes are, because if you don't, you'll keep making the same mistakes. You got to develop as a collector and learn what you're doing wrong so you can fix it and then not do it wrong and you can do better. You can grow on your successes. Now, your failures are just as important. They're learning tools. Uh, well, in the meantime, you know, send that thing back so you get your money back and you try again. But uh, pay attention to how you're doing what you're doing, how you're buying, how you're bidding, what you're buying, what you're bidding on, your reasons for bidding and make adjustments in your methods. Okay. All right, now I'm into the sellers. I got some messages for the sellers out there, especially on YouTube. The real competition, I mean the real competition that will shut all of us down has not yet arrived on YouTube. Dude, it, it, you have no idea what's coming down the road. There are companies out there with so much stock and so, uh, so much power behind them, uh, they're going to make all us small guys just just crumble. Uh, they will drag in thousands and thousands of people to watch and view, and we'll just we'll just fall by the way. Uh, the real competition is not there yet. We are only seeing the tip of the iceberg in the YouTube experience in particular. But if you find that you are charging too much, if you are allowing these these bids to get out of control, um, these buyers, they're getting more information. They're becoming more knowledgeable. And they're going to figure it out. And they're going to be upset when they realize, I spent how much on what? And it's good for five bucks. Um, gosh, it takes so much effort to get regular customers. It sure would be a shame to drive them away. There is a really simple recipe for success, and that is decent coins at decent prices. Stick with that, and you're going to be fine. If you go after the opportunism um, for the quick buck, you will be, dude, you're going to be disappointed, and it would break my heart to see that happen for you. That's what I've got here. You got anything else you want to add? Uh, you know, you, you nailed it. I mean, you treat customers right. You don't let them overpay. You uh, educate them and help them understand what it is they're buying if they don't know. Um, you give them information so that they can seek out more information. Uh, and you make them better buyers in the end, right? Uh, and they return over and over. If, and, and that's the way you build a business, in my opinion. And uh, for your watchers, make the best buyers. That's right. And because they will find you out. They will find you and they say, I want more of what you got because I like it. I mean, I will, I will forever be looking for that guy that sold me uh, that 72. I will forever be looking for him. And, and whenever I need a coin, I'm going to call him because I know he's got it. Absolutely. So. I mean, I shop Tim like a, uh, like a hawk. <laughs> Another 11 ounce number two this time. I'll be taking that one off your hands right now. Yeah. 
Well, these are we hit on a lot of important topics. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and really think about it um, at at the very least. And the and the and the best things you can do are, are learn to grade, go take those PCGS classes. Um, they're free. Uh, I think at like video number five or four or something, they ask you to put in your email address so they can send you a newsletter. But then you get access to all the rest of the videos. I would highly recommend that. I don't. I don't get spammed by them that often, uh, but yeah, I think, I think, um, go go put this stuff to use. Go look at your collection, look at your buying habits, and and really figure out your uh, you know what's going on and learn from it. So, yeah, and there's a whole bunch of coin classes. I've got the playlist for all oh, the yeah. coin classes right below. What PCS, PCGS doesn't cover, Ken's got a whole playlist of stuff that nobody else out there teaches. I tell you. Yeah, we keep adding to it. It's a lot of work. It is. Okay. Now we got Shay. Here he is. He's got his Manta Coins website. You got the link for that oh. down below. <laughs> Nothing much there. Don't. There you go. <laughs> but um, you want to get over and subscribe to his channel as well. Yeah, there you go. I should subscribe. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, YouTube decides that you know, even though I, you're probably the most visited channel by me, <laughs> I, I I needed to unsubscribe from you a few weeks ago. So. It happens. Exactly. If you're not getting notifications, you might need to unsubscribe and resubscribe. There's also the Million Pennies Project, uh, and the link is down below in the description. This is my little blog, and there's lots of good stuff in here. Oh, here's the Lincoln Scent Dive Ready Cheat Sheet, for example. You go into uh, to a show, I'll print this thing up and take it with you so you've got a bit of a guide uh, to help you out. And there's there's all kinds of articles and oh, a little humor here and there just for fun. And if you really like this sort of thing, we're working on the uh, Diagnostic Manual for U.S. Coins over here. And this is uh, freely available. You've got full access for Patreon subscribers. Uh, Patreon supporters, and you'll have the link down below for that as well. And we're, we're hoping to put together a, uh, a sale, and only the Patreon supporters will have access to that one. Oh, yeah. So get in there and, uh, you know, why not hit that support button? The idea was thrown up that maybe we'll share the uh, the, the role site with those Patreon members. <laughs> you know... <laughs> that would be so darn easy. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they're just gonna have to Google it all day and say, "Could this be it? Could this be it?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> Time traveler says, "I just bought out all the rolls on that site for fun." Everything <laughs> <laughs> was decent when you buy every roll. <laughs> we'll just take them all, put everything in the truck, back it right in here. Come on, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Party at Time Travelers. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> Gosh, okay. You're killing That's the thing me. about pennies is that there's billions upon billions upon billions, even if you have more. Yeah. He knows a guy. I actually go through the mental exercise and the calculator and figure out how many cents you could look at until the last day you're breathing and, and make yourself live a hundred years and, and, and try it. How it's many a, coins can you physically get? Billion. Nobody <laughs> done the math. It's like a million, right? I'm really quick though. Yeah, something yeah. like a million in five years. Yeah. You know, Most if you're working a job, maybe a little longer. You got kids, probably three or four times as long. Could you look at them three times each? Yeah. It's tough. Okay, we want to thank. Uh, man, I missed it. I want to thank Chris Garner in particular for the uh, for the super chat. Uh, all this stuff really helps out uh, your support, makes everything possible to keep on going here. Uh, the YouTube channel that I operate, it's been, uh, it's been picking up these past couple of months. I'm pretty pretty stoked about it. Now, people come inside, of course, in the, in the cooler months, and they watch more YouTube. But uh, I hit a major milestone. And we broke a $100 in a single month in YouTube. Ooh. Uh, that's a really big deal. It's a big milestone. They're not going to send me an award yet, but uh, I'll probably take it out and spend it on whores and blow. No. <laughs> oh my god. That's that's how we roll around here. 
YouTube's algorithm is not going to let this uh, mark this as for kids, is it? <laughs> I hope not. Jeez. Uh, this is a uh, this is a PG channel for sure. Oh, and the big show Sunday. Where's that? I got another picture for that one. Uh, let's see. Go here. No, no, is that no? no uh, how about this one? There it is. The big show most Sundays, nine thirty o'clock p.m. Eastern time, right here on my channel. The biggest coin giveaway of all time. You want to be involved in that? Okay. Where'd that? Here's a face for you back. Any questions? Because I'm getting ready for some dinner. We've been going for a couple hours anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Coin class, we're going to take a particular subject and we're going to explore it in depth. So if you want to learn deep information and really, you know, get your head around it uh, with a little more substance, definitely uh, click on that link down below that will take you to the, uh, to the playlist for these. Thanks for the plug earlier. That was Jeff Stanley. Is he still up here? I might still have his video up here. No, I'm sorry. I had a I had a shot down 37. I got like 37 windows up. Right window now. 42. It just didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, I had to clean up a lot of them. But Jeff is uh, one thing he's working on. Oh, ooh, we can do this. Wait a minute. Here's the screen. I'm going to slide this over. What Watch. screen back, Randy, is a good one. You got three little dots here beside Jeff Stanley's name. I'm going to go to channel, but I'm going to open that in a new window. There, <laughs> we can find him. Here he is, Jeff Stanley Coins and Octane. Here's his latest one. It was a happy new year. You know, get over there and uh, see how cute he is. But, uh, you know, watch, listen, learn. He fully intends to do more instructional material. Gosh, this is the stuff that's worth it. You want to learn stuff? It's that information that's going to set you ahead of the curve. That's going to give you the advantage, so you can get these coins and uh, you know save some good money because you're able to identify them correctly. Uh, Walter Brudecki asks uh, regarding grading coins: What if the grade of the coin is not listed in the red book, for instance? Well, it's time to find some additional sources of coin price information. Those. The Numis Media site is free, and it has all the grades and their prices up there. You can always use that. Like AG, for example, a lot of times would not be listed in a price book, such as the such as the Red Book. Uh, I think some of these, the, the earlier ones, might be missing some grades. Yeah, it jumps around like MS sixty three to MS sixty five. Yeah. Right? MS sixty three Brown, for example. Um, I would consider the Red Book to be a less handy reference for, for up-to-date uh, values. Uh, it's good for mintages. Numerous media. It, try yep. it. Red Book's good for mintages. Yep. And if in doubt, use the next lowest down value. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good rule of thumb, actually. <laughs> use the next lowest down. If you can't identify <laughs> it fully and grade it properly, use the next lowest down. Because otherwise you're you're overestimating it, and uh, that's the best way to really just blow those numbers away. Kenny, you taught me a lot, gentlemen. I thank you both in the real way this field should be. Thank you, says Randy, search for humanity. Thank you. Hey, Walter, that's a uh, you know. You think Red Book is a good book? Try uh, try Breen or some other uh, like Wexler's website. He doesn't have values. Yeah, he didn't have. No, I mean like good info, like a good read, like um, you know. Breen is like drinking from a fire hose. Oh yeah, yeah, but um, man, the things you can learn. I mean, he talks about the the geopolitical situation at the time the coin was being thought of and designed and created and rolled out and it's and and he goes through that meticulous categorization of everything every detail imaginable so you can glean information from there that you can't or hey uh try the director's mint re the the what is it the director's report every year yeah, the mint. director of the mint report. Re yearly report uh, go back and search for that on Google and then read through some of that. Newman, stuff. Newman Numismatic Portal has a lot of those. Yeah, that's a great site. Great site for coin info. Let me get you over there. Uh, yeah, um, any of the coin books, any of these uh, 
authoritative reference on some coin, whether it's two cents, uh, you know, Cohen's a good author, Wexler. I mean, some of the older books, I love going to libraries, like little small library, uh, not libraries, but well, libraries too, but uh, small bookshops, mom and pop bookshops. They often have some of these uh, old coin books that you can pick up. I want to talk about that for just a moment, by the way. No, where's the full screen? Where's it? There it is. Okay. Um, you got these guys who study these coins and they write these books and they die and their work is forgotten. Um, it's lost to time. They still have the books are up, out there, but the books are no longer in print. Um, over time, they get they get screwed up. They get flooded out. They get burned in fires. They get lost to cases of stuff left in attic basements, and and they just go away. Uh, we're losing information uh, in these in these volumes. Some of them are, were printed, uh, you know, seventy five, one hundred years ago, fifty years ago. Uh, get the books. Because once the books are gone and the author is gone, oh, you get the half dimes. Okay, I got that. I got that. Uh, the Little Sisters is a good one for half cents. There's a, there's the Little Sisters for half cents. There you go. Right, and this is what 1982. Uh, once the book, once the authors are gone and the books are gone, the work is lost. And it would be a darn shame to lose all that stuff. So, by gosh, make it a priority to save one of those books for yourself. That's part of what we're trying to do with the uh, uh, with the, the numerous labs is try to preserve as much of this information as we can before it's lost to time. Uh, changes in the past uh, 30 years. Uh, people aren't grading coins like they used to. They're leaving that up to PCGS. They're not studying coins as they used to. They're leaving that up to, uh, oh, five as in Stanton, right? Really, this is a taste of what's out there for dye varieties. <laughs> a taste. Uh, we've got what? Um, uh, we're coming up on 10,000 dye varieties in our database, uh, and you don't have maybe you know, 150 pennies in here. Uh, this is just a taste of what's out there. It's a look into the window of what the hobby is, and the hobby is a lot bigger than this. All right, it's a taste. Um, you know, in the in the Lincoln series, uh, just in the memorials, I've I've gone over and documented probably. I'm at like. 3,200 varieties. I'm looking it up now. And I've got maybe another 500 before I get from, and I'm only going from 59 to 2008. And uh, and and there's at least 3,500, if not 30, 3,700 varieties. Um, but, and, and I think yeah, Ken's been working on wheats and I think he's at least to 3,500. You're at 32 on the memorials up to 2009. Yeah, and I, I, I haven't. I mean, that, even right have, there is where I stopped. At, you know how the double die reverses even started. I know. I, yeah. I'm at 2004 right now. On the weeds, let's see where I would hear. Da, 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 58. Uh, that's line number 3655. That's a lot of darn varieties. You got almost 7,000 just in the memorials. Let's not even talk about you know everything else that's out there. Uh, Kennedy's. How many you got on there? On there? Oh, I think seven hundred and eighty something. Seven forty-four over there right now. Forty-four. Twenty-one thousand data points. Uh, Franklin's uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And those are short series. Yeah, I, I that was amazing to me when I when I did that research that there were how many? Four hundred forty-seven. 447 <laughs> from 1948 to 1963. All right. So five as a Stanton, you got 30. 
So in the Cherry Pickers Guide, you got 30. Uh, they don't have 10% of what's available. And that's a, that's the scale of what we're working on. Yeah, so just when you think, you know, if, if this was the breadth of your knowledge at this point, and you're missing realize, right? Um, and and things are even bigger than that. Like we've we've just done what four coins, <laughs> four coin series. That's <laughs> it, and we're still kicking our butts. <laughs> well, it's, it's not just that we're trying to cross reference everything correctly. Yeah. So we've got to go through everything the Wexler has and compare them one by one with everything Copper Coins has. Oh God, and it's so tough. It looks really close. But this guy includes die markers over here, but they don't match up. Yeah. This guy used different die markers. Right. Uh, well, try so to, Variety is it, Vista, it? Yeah. Variety Vista has the, the early die state. Co uh, Wexler has the mid die state. And uh, Copper Coins has the early to mid die state, if you're lucky. Uh, or maybe he has the late dice state. <laughs> or maybe uh, one of them doesn't have one at all. Or yeah, they don't. <laughs> or they completely don't even connect that the other had the same coin, but at a different stage. And yeah, so it's it's fun. But you know what? I'm learning more than I ever thought. I <laughs> there are incredible holes in the research out there too uh, that need to be filled. There are huge, huge holes. Gosh, the holes. Uh, but if this information is lost because the uh, the authors pass away and the books are lost, then we're going to start all over again. And right. these coins, they're not as nice as they were 50 or 100 years ago. Yeah, so we're really working with less information. That's right. We're really trying to do the modern series. I mean, post-1900, uh, at some point, I think we'll grow into older coins and potentially other like foreign coins. And so... All right, I'm wearing thin. Oh, man, don't do that. <laughs> okay, Thursday. You yeah. want to hey, It's going to be on this channel. Big show tomorrow. You can go to the Facebook and post pictures and questions. You can send an email to checkmycoin at yahoo.com, and we and uh, some other great coin community folks will answer your questions right there live and talk about your pictures and your email and your questions. It's what a great opportunity. Uh, you know, you don't have to get in the car and drive down to the coin shop. You don't have to wait for the next coin show. Uh, if you, if you really need your question answered, you know, we'll help, but me is halfway. All right. Take some good pictures, uh, and do a little study of your coin. Uh, we don't want to always have the whole show be that's damaged, that's damaged, that's damaged, that's damaged. We'd love to see and help you with some a uh, little bit uh, more in-depth uh, questions. Right. Hoogie's going to cherry pick some Z's. Yeah, when I was <laughs> uh, getting into this uh, back in the mid '80s, we had a regional coin show uh, every three months, right? And there was one guy there. If he was there. Uh, he'd take a look at one of your coins, and there'd be 20 people in line hoping to show this guy a coin. If he was there, sometimes he'd take, like, the summer off. So you got all these coins you try to get some answers to, and you got to wait five months before you can talk to somebody who knows anything. Huh? That's the way things have changed, because we can take beautiful photos with simple camera equipment, and put these photos around the world and have people look at them instantly and get good information back. That's the change that's occurred in the past, you know, 30 years. I think 30 more years, we'll actually send a hologram of the coin. God only knows. Walter says, maybe someday you can show everyone how to take a good picture using your cell phone. I don't use the cell phone. Ooh, Ooh I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Watch Shay's channel. He'll he'll do a show. Okay, well I've had enough. I'm gonna right. take off. See y'all soon. Take care. Yep, I want to thank Shay for uh, for joining us. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, I thought it would add some good dimension and get some good stories in and just you know go with it. Nice, Shumar. So good night to everyone. We'll see you later. Night, everybody.